seriousness of how we approach this game. And uh, we had a few moments yesterday where I wasn't as sure, but they uh, got themselves focused in a, in a big way. I thought our coaches did a fantastic job this week uh, of game planning for Pittsburgh and at the same time um, turning around and getting us ready to play this game. And uh, we just want our players to continue to understand that, that, that they have to be in control of what they, what they can control. And, and, and they can't control every thing that goes on in a game, but they can control their intensity, they can control their talk, they can control you know, what we're trying to do with the game plan, they can control how hard they run, those type of things. And so that, that's the kind of improvement we want to continue to make. And if you make that improvement, then all of a sudden your execution's better and you get more stops. I thought the fact that there were, Jade said, that, that, that uh, they got two baskets in the last 23 possessions of the first half. So we closed out the first half with a lead, uh, which was important. And I thought we came back out right away in the second half. And uh, they made a few more baskets, but the bottom line is we played hard, we made adjustments, and a lot of people contributed. So I was excited about that. There, there were. Anytime you're going to play that way, you're going to have a lot of really good individual performances inside of the game. But the biggest thing to me was the, was the connectedness on the defensive end and the ball movement uh, that continued on the offensive end. Go ahead. Next question. Zach? You talked a little bit about this, but, but how much of it was defense queuing? I think it was a 23-5 to five run you guys finished on in the, the first half. Oh, it's huge. I thought it was a carryover from the other night. I mean, they're, they're, they have to realize um, the, the bottom line, especially as, as you get ready to go on the road, that you're never going to be able to control every aspect of the game. You can control that effort defensively, that the intensity of it, like I said. And then really, we're not trying to give them uh, every possible thing to think about right now when they're on defense. But there are certain things that have got to be constants uh, outside of their basic, the basic fundamentals. And, and we wanted to make those improvements. Tonight I thought our weak side got better. Uh, we, we, we've seen two teams this week that do a really good job of wanting middle drive, whether it was Pittsburgh or Savannah State. And, and really so much of what they do is predicated by how much they get the ball to the middle, especially Especially for both teams, you know, on the on the left side looking in to drive right, but, but they can go both ways with it. So we wanted to do a good job with that. There were certain things in the post that we wanted to be able to take away, and and they're learning. They're learning the, the different segments that go into um, how everybody's got to be connected. No matter if it's a side pick and roll, or we're in one coverage that two or three guys are really involved with. Well, no, all five are involved. Or if it's changing defenses, or it's how the post is being played, all those different things that they understand everybody has to be at their best. And if you're going to beat good teams, you can't have one guy doing this, or one guy relaxed over here, or one guy not seeing the cutter. So we're, we're learning that. And um, I thought this week we took some real steps with that. And then I think our running game continued to get better this week. I thought it, we, we did a good job of turning the defensive stops into to really good runouts, but at the same time, when they scored baskets, we got it out quick, we got it up in advance. I thought we dealt with our pressure pretty well tonight, and uh, which obviously we're going to see as good a pressure basketball team as I haven't seen everybody play, and not even close, but the little, and I haven't seen a lot of Louisville, but I've seen enough to know from last year and the years past, and certainly even a little bit this year, that their pressure defense is as good as anybody's in the country. So. Uh, the, the, the more we can attack, the more we can move the ball, the more that we can get stops defensively and get out and do those same things, the better we'll be. Uh, you know, with Stan adjusting to a, you know, a bit of a new role, you know, how important was it for him to sort of have something positive? Oh, very going? important. Very, very important. He's worked very hard. And, and it's not easy for him. You know, and, and, um, and try to remind him that even the second game back, he was one of the guys at the end of the game finishing the game for us in, in the last five minutes of the game. But Stan, Stan works extremely hard. Um, for, since he's been back, I mean, he's, he doesn't go home after, after the walkthrough. He eats, he sits around for a little bit, then he goes back out in the gym and shoots. I see him countless, I mean, I worry, okay, are you, are you working too hard? I mean, he wants it so bad. So to me, we're trying to, to remind him as his shooting improves, just do what his strengths entail. And just, just go as hard as you can go, change speed and direction, tap the rim, make simple plays and uh, be just a defensive hawk. And uh, I thought tonight was, was a big step for him 
and, and, and playing that way and playing very efficient. And statistics showed it, but most importantly, the spirit and the, and the mentality that he played with showed it. Okay. Coach, when you get 15 points off the bench from Emmett and Colin combined, you got to be pretty happy with that. 15 points and 10 boards. Yeah, I hadn't even really looked at that close. And, and I was actually happy that Jeremiah went in with, with some of the main guys and, and did okay too. So we've got to keep developing that. We're not, um, um, we've got so many guys that you really couldn't define them with a position. They just need to be basketball players and, and, and play the game, and it doesn't matter who they're guarding or what their position is. They just play as hard as they can play. And Colin and Emmett are getting so much done because of the hustle game. You know, and, and, and Emmett's still got a lot to learn, and we gave up a couple buckets on the out-of-bounds play because he misplayed the action. And, and uh, Colin, I've said before, we're continuing to, to really monitor his minutes in practice. And he doesn't like it, but it's 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 – What's best for him, it's what's best for the long run, you know, to continue to have him uh, be as strong as he can be throughout the season. But they come onto the games and, and they really are playing like they belong and they're making a difference and they're impacting our team in a very strong way. Coach, can you talk about the way your team's coming together right now? Anybody ever tell you you look like Johnny Marlin? Johnny Marlin played for us. He's now the leading scorer at Indiana Weston. <laughs> look dead on him. Look. So. Great. Yeah, that's a compliment. He's a good kid. So. Anybody say what? You distracted me. I'm sorry. Um, I just wanted to ask you uh, how your team's coming together right now, how vital that is before you guys play mobile. Well, it's, it's got to be constant. I mean, that, that's the bottom line. We put a week together, and we put a good week together, back-to-back -back games, and this is probably the first time all year where we've had back-to-back -back games where the defensive intensity was really the, 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 the key to the game, and, and I think that makes everything happen from there. It, it, it makes your rebounding better. It makes your attack game better. It makes your fast break better. And when you're playing that hard and they score, you don't like it, but they got to learn, like, we got to get the ball right up the court. And so that, that, that's your, your teams. If, if your team's unselfish on offense, you're going to be good. If your team is connected on defense, you got a chance to be really good. And that's what we've got to continue to build. We've got a long way to go to get that every possession, but we made strides this week. But it'll get severely tested on Tuesday. Can you talk about that a little bit? As far as what? As far as Tuesday's matchup. Maybe? Well, they're, they're, they're outstanding. and There's no question about it. I'm not as prepared um, to talk about the, the personnel and things of that nature as I will be over the next few days. But, but the bottom line is uh, Rick is one of the, the, the best that's ever done it. There's no way around that. If he hadn't gone to the NBA with the Knicks and with the Celtics, he could be sitting right there with Mike Krzyzewski, uh, sitting there getting ready to get his 1,000 points. I mean, he's, he's that good a coach. We've had uh, battles with him in the past, it, it, back when we were at Marquette, and learned a lot from, from watching his teams, uh, the way he coaches the game. They have as good of a pressure defensive team as I have seen to this point. We're going to have to really deal with that. Our zone offense is going to have to be outstanding because they're going to do different things defensively, but you've really got to be able to, to – uh, run your zone offense and run it, run it crisp and sharp and, and get movement. So we're going to have to be really good there. And um, they don't let up. The, the bottom line is they never go away and they don't let up. And, and their guards are extremely <coughs> physical in the sense of how well they get up into the ball. And, and, and um, the one thing that, the, the, the one common theme, you know, preparing for this season was how good SMU created uh, defensive pressure and got steals, how good Pittsburgh got steals, how good Louisville was at getting steals and back tips. Louisville's at the, at the head of the class on that right now. So we're going to have to really, really be great with the basketball and, and get through the press. How do you see your rotation and bench players developing? You pulled all five starters and put five bench guys in in a close game. Well, once I pulled them, I said I subbed. Yeah, you know, subbed. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't pull anybody tonight for, for uh, any other reason other than substitution. So when you pull is when you're, yeah. you're getting a guy out of the game. I mean, yeah, I meant subbing and I pulled. Uh, it's just the way it worked out. I mean, they're, they're, we, we're starting to get a little bit more where we want to get the guards out at a certain time, especially the three mm -hmm. starting guards, uh, get them out at certain points of time. It didn't work out that way. Tonight, I didn't get, Yogi was playing so hard uh, in the first half that I didn't get him a second blow there that I would have liked. And he never wants to come out, but, but uh, that's why I got him out a little bit earlier in the second half. So when I put them all in at that point, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of putting three or four in at a time. Um, I don't think over a period of time that really helps you. But tonight, it didn't hurt us. 
and um, uh, it, it, I don't know if we have a true rotation yet. I mean, it, it's 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 based on a lot of different things, but I know we've got guys that that want to be in the rotation and belong in the rotation, and that just becomes a situation of how well they play once they're inside of it. Alex, okay, Sam, last question. James mentioned that during practice after Pitt being out rebounded that you guys might have gotten, in, gotten into them about getting the rebounding uh, a little bit more through. You guys have rebounded them. Well, yeah, we get, in, we get into them about improving our rebounding every day. You, you guys have rebounded them 42 24. What were you maybe stressing the difference in practice? Well, I think. I, I, um... <laughs> I, th I think it's just I think it's just more technique. I, I think it's it's um, you know James James is is what did he have tonight? 18. No rebound last three. So he's probably still right there as one of the leaders of the team in rebounding. I think I think the the the, the blockout principles you know making contact and pivoting. Um, we missed some rebounds over the last few weeks and even tonight where we go up with one hand. I think I think we're trying to become much better at two-hand rebounding. We're not just going to go out and get a bunch of one-hand boards and 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 get things done. And we have to be a two-hand positional rebounding team, blockout team, uh, hit and pursue. So it, it's really just making sure that that we're we're constantly never getting away from it, every possession. But at the same time, them knowing that we're not going to win games giving up 25 offensive rebounds. You can't bank on a team only getting 14 points out of those 25 boards. All right, and and we we've got to be. We were in the fight. But now we've got to do a better job of being in position to, to grab the ball first and rather than just being in the fight and, and get more 50-50 balls. Okay. Anything else? All right. Well, thank you.